2005 hurricane season will go down in history books as one of the greatest tragedies to hit southwest Louisiana. Hello and welcome to Hurricane Eye of the Storm. I'm your host, Justin Tony. Today on our program, we're going to take a look into our personal story of how we survived the storm and how our friendship brought us closer together, right here on Hurricane Eye of the Storm. mandatory evacuation of Calcasieu Parish. Hurricane Rita gains serious strength tonight. The hurricane is looking a very symmetrical, so that's bad news for us. Please seek shelter elsewhere. Phase one will be called the Calcasieu Visit, which is a look and leave. This is a devastating storm, and it could devastate southwest Louisiana on its current course. She's stronger than Katrina. Hurricane Rita gains serious strength tonight. No one could expect the hurricane season of 2005 to spell certain doom for South Louisiana. However, on September 24th, Hurricane Rita made that possible. I first heard that the hurricane was coming about two days before it actually hit. I wasn't even aware of it. And my first thought was, it's not going to hit us. Well, I can tell you that I was sitting in uh, my uh, class. I teach world geography at Iowa High School. And uh, one of the things I was showing my students was the hurricane. And I remember uh, I was showing them on the, um, the computer. And we were looking at it in the projected path. And of course, everybody was saying it was going toward Galveston, toward Houston. Maybe it was going to get near us, but nobody expected it to turn toward Lake Charles. Wednesday night was a, tra well, not a tragic night, but it was a night where we all had to come and we were worried about the storm. And uh, I think we went, we went out to eat at Johnny Carino's. And uh, you could feel the tension in the city. Not everyone went evacuated, but some people were getting ready to go, you know, seeing the storm was coming. And we went with Carlissa and Mr. Book. We all went out to eat at Johnny Carino's. Right, and then I went over to my girlfriend's uh, apartment with another friend of mine. And we sat up all night just watching cartoons and watching the Weather Channel. That night, you know, we were expecting to leave Friday just to get away and uh, you know we said good night and I left and went home and everybody else stayed up. We uh, stayed at my house for a little while um, watching cartoons in the weather channel and um, wondering if the storm was going to come towards us. We really didn't think it was going to hit close to us but um, we just kept watching it. Hey, Marty and Cynthia, yeah, still looking at a Category 5, but a strong Category 5 at that. Now, this is the latest look at the satellite. And one thing to notice here, look at all the purples and magentas just flare up right around the center of circulation that let us know that we've got a very healthy hurricane, plenty of very warm water out ahead of this storm. Wow, now, we're looking at 173. Pressure is down to 897. That's the lowest pressure that I've ever seen in my entire life. And uh, we're looking at probably uh, this thing being number three all time on lowest pressure. It's moving west now. And this is a note, only nine. It's dropped about four miles per hour on the speed, so it is slowing down. The forecast fans still roughly the same area. Still looking at Port O'Connor to back up to around Freeport. And notice how close it is to Galveston. There's Galveston Bay there. And we are definitely still in that cone of uncertainty. And I remember putting my TV on channel nine and going to bed and then getting woken up about five in the morning with the TV on Thursday saying the storm had moved. Hurricane Rita changed everything for people in South Louisiana. A diminishing high pressure system moved over the state of Louisiana and into the Atlantic Ocean. This caused Hurricane Rita's first path to change from Galveston, Texas to right over the Sabine River, which caused Hurricane Rita to make a direct impact over Calcasieu Parish and Southwest Louisiana. We now have a full mandatory evacuation of Calcasieu Parish, and that is entire Calcasieu Parish, all homes, mobile homes, mandatory evacuation. Please seek shelter elsewhere. This is a devastating storm and it could devastate southwest Louisiana on its current course. Uh, well, I woke up Thursday morning to a text message from Justin saying that the storm had turned and so I got up and got ready and got all packed up. We turned the TV on and there it was taking the 90 degree angle north heading straight for Lake Charles and we're like going oh it's time to run. 
And at that point, I went home, I packed all my stuff, told my roommate, get out now. The phone lines started to get crazy. You couldn't make a phone call anywhere. Um, I remember my cell phone didn't work for two or three hours. And, you know, you, you were supposed to call these numbers to get help, and no one could get through since everyone had been jamming the phone lines. At about 10 in the morning, I made my way from my home, and I went in the city and started filming things, filmed a lot of the places I went to just to have something to remember the old way of life. And I got to the mall, and it was kind of eerie. You look in the mall parking lot, and there's not a car there. On a, on a Wednesday morning, there should be hundreds of cars waiting to go in and go shopping. And uh, actually, it was Thursday morning. Fortunately for us, my girlfriend Carly had uh, asked her parents to see if we could come evacuate and stay with them. So we all met at my house later on and then headed toward Eunice. The first thing I thought of was, this ought to be fun. But then uh, as, as time went on, we found out that the hurricane was coming uh, at least very close to our way and coming towards Lake Charles and Carlos is from Lake Charles. So uh, she did give us a call and say she was coming down with four, uh, her and three others were coming to camp out with us, evacuate per se. Drive to Eunice was horrific. Um, what should have been about an hour, hour and a half drive, took about four hours. We got, about the second we got into Moss Bluff, the traffic just stopped and you know, no one was going anywhere. Um, we took a shortcut th up through Topsy that took us about four hours. We probably would have been sitting seven or eight hours if we had stayed on the interstate. Getting to Eunice was a blast. Um, like I said, our area has never been really through an evacuation, so everybody trying to get out at once, it was a lot of fun. We were on the road at about 11.30, and the traffic there was intense, bumper to bumper, like a gridlock that so many people were afraid would happen. And we were in this traffic probably for for about an hour before we even made it to, to 190, 191, the highway over there to take us to Kinder. And then that alone took us three to four hours. So we got, we got there, it was probably, I think it was 4.30 or so when we got into Eunice. And the traffic in Eunice wasn't bad yet. What we usually took about an hour to get from Moss Bluff to Eunice, took us at least four and a half, uh, bumper to bumper. Um, and once we got to Eunice, we noticed, of course, it already had pretty bad uh, gasoline prices. But with knowing the hurricane was about to hit and what was going to happen, all of a sudden you saw prices just jump through the roof. I mean, getting close to almost two forty-five, three dollars a gallon for gasoline. So we were, once we got to Eunice, we knew we were going to be stuck there a while. The hurricane is looking a very symmetrical, so that's bad news for us. That eye looks like it's a just getting a little bit smaller. The latest coordinates as of 7 p.m. will get fresh new coordinates at 10 o'clock. It's at 26.0 north, 89.9 west. Moving west-northwest at 10 miles per hour. Winds are still at 145 miles per hour. That's still making it a very strong and dangerous Category 4 storm. Now. As you can see, people are boarded up in Eunice and they are ready to go boarded up. Even the Walmart in town is closed. All the gas stations are out of gas. All the fast food restaurants are closed. And this is just a sign of what is to come. On Friday afternoon, the town of Eunice was, was desolate. There was no one there except for a few cops patrolling. And when we tried to go get food, there was nothing there. I mean, everyone had closed early, boarded up, and it was already starting to rain, and the winds were picking up. And, uh, you know, I took a trip outside just to kind of see what was going on. 425 on Friday afternoon. It's raining. We're going to take a drive down Eunice and show you what's going on here. That city is pretty much evacuated by now. There's just there's a sign of a few people here still trying to embrace the... Uh, the conditions that we're seeing here. Uh, they're uh, telling us that it's it's gonna come and we're just now getting into some of the smaller rain bands, some of the outer squall line of the storm. You couldn't see a car. You couldn't see anyone on the roadways. 
and it was pretty eerie that this thing was fixing to come through. Well, folks, it, it looks like we are in for it, and hopefully everybody has prepared adequately. Friday night was probably the most horrible night of my life. <laughs> I've gone through a hurricane before, but um, Friday night the electricity went out. Come to find out it was because of a tree that fell in the electricity. I mean, lines in the backyard. But um, it was really hot. We opened the door and could hear the howling from the winds and everything. And uh, we just kind of hunkered down and stayed in the house all night long. It was kind of scary because we didn't know what would ha be happening outside. Because as it looked like on this TV, it was going to take a direct hit on Lake Charles, and that meant Eunice could possibly get some serious winds. And later on that night, we actually did. Um, I don't think it ever got up to the gust that Lake Charles got hit with, but um, we had some pretty good gusts. We could see the trees in the... Uh, the yard just bending. We never saw any of them break, but um, we could see stuff flying around. Um, high winds, major amount of rain. We were sitting in there in the little, I guess you could call it a little TV room. Uh, her dad had put on the, uh, the generator from his big motor home, and uh, we were having our little TV on channel seven. The big TV, of course, was on uh, another channel for the Eunice area. We had pretty good conditions to wait the storm out. It got pretty nasty for a couple hours, but I don't think it got nearly as nasty as what we were seeing on TV. I guess about 9 or 10, the wind really started to pick up, and you could see the trees. And the power had gone out, so we was all, there's about 15 of us, give or take, all in one room watching Channel 7 on a generator with a fan, trying to keep us cool, trying to keep rest at what was going on. And uh, one would think uh, probably in most circumstances that wouldn't have been a comfortable situation but in our home it turned out to be quite nice. We, uh, we, got, we got along real fine, uh, had a good time, uh, spent lots of quality time with the extension cords and uh, emergency power generator running. Uh, I really can't complain about how it went. I remember Saturday morning the storm had come through and I was was going through. We had stayed up the whole night and I was looking looking forward to riding out the entire storm at night, staying up to see everything. And uh, Saturday morning, I dozed off for a little while at about two o'clock. At four o'clock, I got woken up with the National Weather Service stating that the Iowa was going through and that there was, you know, there was twisters everywhere. The Isle of Capri had been destroyed. Uh, something had hit the I-210 bridge. There was all these rumors that were going through and it was pretty, uh, pretty intense. Anything that happens when um, uh, people are out of an area and you don't have any footage and there's nothing going on, uh, all kinds of rumors. Uh, there was rumor that the barge had hit 210 Bridge and messed it up. Uh, the, I, the overpass in Iowa had crashed. Uh, people were saying that there had something had gone right through the middle of the Isla Capri Casino and destroyed it. Uh, just a number of different things. Uh, of course, uh, the thing we kept hearing was it looks like a bomb's gone off. Uh, trees are everywhere, um, debris is everywhere, signs are down. Uh, water, of course, did get into most of downtown Lake Charles. And it backed up the water that much. And of course, we hadn't heard anything yet, but with knowing what had happened when Audrey hit, we could imagine how Cameron and some of the areas south of Lake Charles were looking. Saturday morning, after we had finally fallen asleep and we got up, we went outside and surveyed the damage, drove through town, and it wasn't as bad as we thought it would be in Eunice. This is what it feels like to stand in a hurricane. It's the aftermath, but it's still, I'd say what, 60 miles an hour? I went to visit the city to see what happened. I took George and we went along for a day and just what we saw in the city was something like a bomb went off. And I went to my uncle's house, my other uncle, and uh, I saw his home and it was 
very hard to go through there. You had to go through a lot of down power lines and cross over a lot of things. We didn't know if it was a live wire or not. So when we got through and we saw his home, it was pretty much destroyed. The rebuilding process has begun in southwest Louisiana, and for some people, their lives have returned to somewhat of a normal routine. Although the rebuilding process will be a long and difficult one, our city will become stronger and better than ever before. As for the four people who evacuated the storm, their lives have become closer together because of one tragic event that threatened to take everything away from them. If I had to go through another storm, I'd say I probably would, but I would go a place where I could evacuate further. I wouldn't want to be so close that I would feel the effects or have to go through having no water, no electricity, no food or anything like that for an extended period of time. There's part of me that says yes, because I'm just an adventurous type guy and would love to see, be able to be there and see what this power can really do. But after seeing what this one could do and it actually kind of missed us, we didn't get hit as hard as we could have or what didn't come on shore as, an, as, a, as a five, I really wouldn't want to be anywhere near it. The 2005 hurricane season is over for Southwest Louisiana, but the story of how people's lives were affected by the storm does not end here. As time progresses, our town will be rebuilt and lives will return to normal. We can only hope for a speedy recovery for all those people's lives who were affected by both Hurricane Rita and Hurricane Katrina. For Hurricane Eye of the Storm, I've been your host, Justin Tony.